Cabo Ato, a long life. A Cabo, welcome. A uh, Ori Egun. Uh, we thank the ancestors for their wisdom. Today we're going to begin a series of um, conversations looking at uh, the symbolic meaning of the liturgical language used in Ariki Ela. Oriki from the Elysian Orikiki means to praise the consciousness of a specific force in nature. Uh, Ifa teaches that everything in nature has consciousness from subatomic particles to stars and solar systems and so on. So part of the sacred technology of Ifa is the ability to say Oriki, which uh, are in effect, invocations to align our consciousness with the consciousness of something other than our own thoughts and mind. Mm. This is possible through a process that quantum physics calls quantum entanglement. Mm. The process of is symbolized by the image on the uh, sewn into the clothing worn by diviners in traditional Yoruba culture. Um, it's called the, either the eternal knot or the weave pattern. Uh, it's really a, a symbolic reference to the idea that all things in nature are capable of uh, interaction and communication, uh, largely, I would believe, based on intention and focus. Uh, I don't think it's an extraordinary uh, skill or a superpower. It's part of how we're wired as human beings. So the invocation process has two components. One is called Ofoashe, which are words of power that mm, are designed to trigger an altered state. Sometimes those words don't have any meaning. They just have a resonance. As we go through the Eureka, I'll point those out. And also, when you come upon Ofoashe or a power word, it's traditional and common to repeat that word and let it blend from mm, a clearly articulated word into an, a resonance. Um, it's That's a very common uh, technique used in Tibetan Buddhism. When you hear the Tibetan Buddhist chants with those long horns they use. Uh, so it's a similar process in my experience. Um, but in addition to the Ophoshe, the um, Oriki or invocations include a really clear and precise definition of who the spirit is, what it is, what function it has in creation. I believe that as an earth centered mm, spiritual tradition, we have a um, obligation to correlate the words found in our scripture with specific forces in nature. And we also have a obligation to explain that um, to our communities. You know, sometimes people feel like the information I'm sharing is secret. It's not, it's the heart of our faith. Uh, <coughs> it's kind of, uh, assuming that this is secret is uh, kind of like uh, saying that Talking about Jesus is secret in Christianity. It doesn't make any sense. So we're going to take a look at these words. You know, the uh, the art of um, translating liturgical Yorba or any liturgical language <coughs> is really rooted in the idea that the words have uh, both symbolic meanings and multiple meanings depending on context. So when you look at the Ifa sacred scripture, the, the, the information can apply to a single person, to a couple, to a family, to a community, to the world, to the nature of reality itself. Each of those different levels of interpreting the same verse requires a shift in your understanding of the meaning of liturgical words. Liturgical word, words are specifically words related to spiritual matters that are not a common part of uh, what I would say conversational language. And so they require a little special attention. We know um, 
for example, in Christianity, there's huge dictionaries just uh, for the purpose of defining liturgical words used biblically. And so mm, part of my uh, interest and part of my, I would say, destiny has been to begin the process of categorizing those liturgical words uh, as they're found in uh, traditional Ifa oral scripture. The boost I had in that process came from reading uh, Bascom's book, uh, I think it was called Life of the Gods, in which he translates some, unfortunately not all, but some Odu uh, Ifa that were dictated to him by the, at the time by the uh, Arabah of Ile Ife, that was Arabah Fatumache, and the translation was done by uh, Baba Apega, uh, uh, who was the uh, grandfather of the uh, man who published the Apega version of Odu Ipa. So, um, and I was uh, blessed uh, in the beginning of my studies to have a type copy of a Pegas book before the book was published. So correlating that material with the material in Baskin's book was a big help in trying to uh, translate uh, the Orba words. I made a liturgical dictionary. Uh, the dictionary was uh, essentially based on uh, Baskin's methodology. What he did is he printed each verse originally in Yorba, and then he printed a word-for-word -word translation and then he, he printed an interpretation of the translation if you if you translate Yorba directly from English excuse me from Yorba to English it, most of the times it doesn't make a lot of sense so you have to mm, by inference create more of a flow uh, you know and you know as I go through these Ariki and talk about them sometimes I see uh, differences in the translations that I made or that other people have made and the translations that could be made. So that, that'll that probably come up as well. But let's just start with the first line of Ariki Ela, which comes from the uh, Holy Odu Ogunda Osa. Ogunda Osa is uh, invoked during Tefar Ifa initiation at the beginning of the invocation of uh, the Meji Odus and the invocation of Osa Torah. Uh, it's done before the invocation of those uh, elements of the ritual to make sure the person uh, singing the uh, verses and singing the uh, uh, chants to Oshe Torah is in possession with Ela because it's that possession which is the foundation for passing the Ashe and causing the uh, Yawol to go into possession. There is some dispute about whether or not Ifa priests go into possession, uh, but, you know, to me, the oral scripture, especially in Ogun Osa, makes it very clear that we do. The Odu says, this is the Uriki uh, invoked for possession with the spirit of uh, Ela. The spirit of Ela is the spirit of destiny. It was the spirit channeled by the prophet Arumila. Sometimes that gets confused. Arumila from the Elysian Oruni Allah, meaning heaven is my light, or Orun is my light, or the invisible realm is my light, was a historical person who functioned as a medium for the spirit of Elah, and who brought the spirit of uh, Elah to uh, West Africa, to the Yorba people, and who taught it in a place called Oke Itashe. Itashe, uh, Oke Itashe, meaning mountain, at the crossroads of power, it was a place where there was a thin veil or a portal between Orun and Aie, and he used the Ashe from that place to enhance his ability to communicate with spirit and then to share that with people who then put it in the form of a long poem, which then became memorized and then added on to over the years. But having been blessed to be to have traveled to OK Tashi, I can definitely say that it's a place of spiritual power, a place of um, easy connection to spirit, and a place where different dimensions blend and move in and out of each other with um, 
I would say remarkable ease. All right. So, Ela Omo Osin, Ela Omo Yigi Yigi Otao Me, Spirit of Manifestation, uh, Child of the Ruler, Spirit of Manifestation, Child of the Offspring of the Stone and the Water. All right. So, Ela uh, from the Elysian, E Ala, meaning the light or the spirit of the light. Omo, child, obviously. Osin, now that's the first of many uh, profound. Uh, liturgical words that have a deep uh, scientific meaning. I believe that uh, code when do Odu Ifa is what I call paleo science or ancient science. It's a science that was rooted in what modern science calls quantum physics and also what the earlier science called alchemy. And I believe that alchemy is a real science and alchemy was the explanation or the integration of spirit into the physical world, as Western science uh, developed, that integration was denied and alchemy was considered uh, uh, a fantasy at best. But in truth, it's the foundation of what I would call true science. And there's real no understanding of the world we live in without an understanding of the world, of the, uh, the process of alchemy and the word alchemy itself. So, mm, Ifa science is predicated on the idea that all things in creation have consciousness. Everything from a subatomic particle to um, stars and so on. So, um, in understanding quantum physics, uh, you know, which has only been. Mm, explored in the Western world in the last 150 years at most. So most of the science encoded into Odu Ifa has remained uh, unappreciated, uh, not, not understood or even grasped by Westerners with Western education. So Osin is translated here as a uh, spirit of manifestation, which it is, but Osin as a word also includes the element of sight or vision. So it's a, uh, the word implies that manifestation is a function of vision, which is one of the basic tenets of uh, quantum physics. Seeing a thing brings it into existence. Seeing a thing shapes what it looks like. Seeing a thing is part of what is called co-creation. Seeing a thing, um, can shape the world and it can also shape the world in um, ways that do not accurately reflect the world itself. So Osin is a deeply esoteric concept uh, that could mm, minimally be defined as manifestation. It also could be defined as um, visionary experience, but I think more accurately it can be defined as the ability for eyesight to shape reality and become entangled with reality as a fundamental premise of the nature of reality. So just in the first uh, three words of the Oriki, we have a profound description of the nature of reality. It's really remarkable in my opinion. So the next sentence, Ela omo o yigi yigi o tao me. So Omo o yigi yigi, o yigi yigi literally means the spirit of shaking, uh, which mm, in English may not make a lot of sense or mean anything, but the spirit of shaking refers to the initial movement in mm, reality was defined as do or do do, meaning the source of darkness. It was a uh, unmovable reality that can't really be defined because it didn't incorporate the elements of time and space. So with Oyigi Yigi, we have what mm, modern astrophysics calls the center point of creation or the uh, convergence of all the elements of creation into a single point, which then expanded from that point uh, through the projection of what Ifa calls Allah, uh, meaning the spirit of light, but it's not light mm, as we understand it in the 
mundane world necessarily, but Allah is what uh, Nikola Tesla called a longitudinal beam. And the longitudinal beam is a light projected into the ether uh, in a straight line with no frequency. Uh, ether is a concept not generally accepted by uh, Western academic science, but ether is the uh, thing called uh, doo-doo in uh, Ifa, meaning the darkness spirit of doo-doo, o oh, doo-doo. So o oh, doo-doo wa means that which emerges from the spirit of darkness, and that which emerges from the spirit of darkness is Allah, or a light beam, that carries the uh, that carries the hologram of all of creation. In other words, uh, modern science describes what Ifa calls Allah as a holographic uh, data storage phenomena that. Uh, means every tiny fragment of creation holds the blueprint uh, for all of creation. And so um, with the emergence of Allah from Oyegi Yegi, we have the, 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 the primal manifestation of the Ifa uh, Trinity, uh, and that is the light itself, which is electrical impulse is called Ashe, and Ashe comes um, directly from Orun and carries the blueprint itself. But in order for uh, light to propel itself and to hold the um, forms of uh, creation, uh, it, it's coupled with magnetism, which is the ability for light to turn in on itself and create the shapes that exist in uh, creation. Uh, and in, the, in their fundamental form, those shapes are uh, described as sacred geometry. And uh, the sacred geometry created by magnetism is uh, called Ire and Ifa. It's the uh, ability of Ashe to transform into a manifestation of a real thing. And so, um, in um, liturgical terms, the, the electromagnetic light itself is the light of Allah emerging from Orun, uh, which is referred to as Ela when it uh, connects uh, with human consciousness. The, uh, the ability of um, light to uh, form reality uh, is uh, known by different names, but it would be Aie or the Odudu Wa, spirit of darkness uh, coming from heaven to earth. And then the uh, container for those two forces that allow them to manifest, it would be Odudu Olodumare, from the Elysian Olo Odu Oshumare, meaning spirit of the uh, womb of the rainbow spirit, meaning the um, container that causes sound to morph into light and light to morph into different frequencies, and those different frequencies represent different uh, forces in nature within creation. So to say, E la omo o yigi yigi o ta mi o, Excuse me, Otao Mi. Otao Mi means uh, uh, stone of the water. So that's a reference to the fact that the original uh, uh, calabash of creation was made up of um, hydrogen atoms. And when those atoms collapse on themselves and uh, create uh, the transformation leading to the uh, existence of hydrogen and uh, oxygen atoms, we have the creation of uh, what I would call omiolocum or cosmic water. And that cosmic water then becomes the basic uh, building block thereafter for all of creation. So Ota'omi, the stone of water, uh, stone representing the masculine 
principle uh, and Omi representing the uh, feminine principle. So the coming together of uh, dynamics and form and form in that moment is then the foundation through which a law mm, becomes manifest, understandable, knowable, and a source of um, inspiration for uh, the prophet Arumila, who was then uh, explained the nature of reality to us through the use of liturgical yorba. Uh, so we we got through the first sentence of the Uriki today. Uh, for that, I'm grateful. Uh, tomorrow we'll move on to the next uh, part of the Uriki. In the meantime, everybody stay safe. Know that you're loved and appreciated. Uh, we'll talk again.